Hey guys, it's Carl Brown here from GuitarLessons365.com and today's the day we're finally going to start redoing some of my old ancient, ancient videos that have been done like 10, 12 years ago. Uh, the first one I'm going to do here is Hot for Teacher, of course, because you got to do it, it's Eddie. It's, it's, he's amazing. Now I wanted to do something special for these uh, kind of redo videos, um, something that I hadn't done before. and. Um, I reached out to the people with the Play Guitar Hits app. Now they have an app that allows you to not only uh, watch full performances, so you'll see all the four full performances that I'm doing in this video, um, you'll see the full performances, but you also have synchronized tablature with it in the app uh, that you can like loop little sections and um, slow it down to like 50%. Uh, there's also hundreds of songs in the app, uh, really well done, uh, really well transcribed and everything. So you're going to be seeing more songs from me as well. So they are sponsoring this, by the way. You'll see a link in the description below to get a free trial to the app. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great deal. It's available on, uh, I think, iOS, Mac OS, and Android. Um, and you can just check it out for free and watch all of these performance sections that I'm doing in this video with fully synchronized tab, which is something that I can't personally do here on YouTube, but they can do it. Um, so it's, it's great to be working with them. So if you want to see that, click that link below and then check out the app. All right, so let's crank into this intro here. So um, we have, it uh, starts with just a kind of a pick slide here. Good old Eddie. And then oh, we go into the tapping section. now. It's kind of a quick transition for me to do, um, you know, the pick, uh, holding the pick with the, you know, like normally with for the pick slide and then jumping into that tapping section. So for that, a lot of times I'll use my middle finger for this opening tapping section because it's just hard to get there from the pick slide. Um, Eddie, obviously, he does a lot of picking. He, he moved his pick around a lot, but um, we, we can do it with those fingers. Those, like how he does it so he can just, you know, tap with his index. But uh, anyway. Find a way that's comfortable for you. So we're going to start with the pick scrape. And then we're going to go into the... So now, uh, it's a kind of a pattern that he's doing here. Uh, but he starts it, he has to start it somewhere, right? So we're going to actually start with an open string. So you kind of have to pick the string uh, with the, so whatever finger you're tapping with, just kind of pluck the open A string. Then you hammer on uh, third fret there on the A string, and then seven. So we have this. Now, when we start getting to this first actual tap, it's at the twelfth fret here on the A string, and then we can start looking at this actual pattern. And so the pattern here is you're going to be tapping at twelve, pull off to the seven, pull off to the three off to the open A, hammer back on three, hammer back on seven. So that's the pattern. And then you just gonna repeat it. So so far we had this. So after you've done that a few times After you do basically the fourth time of pulling off to the open A, you're going to, instead of coming back with the three and seven again, you're going to move your fret hand up to five and nine. So it's the same lick besides that. It still has the open A string. You still tap it at the 12th fret, but we just kind of transition up there. So we have this, so we have this. And just kind of continue the pattern. Now, so it kind of ends with a kind of just a pull off there and jump over to the D string real quick and tap 12 and hammer, uh, pull off to that 3 and uh, hammer on to 7. So that's kind of a setup for the next string. So we have the. So after you get that, you tap on that D string to start, pull off to three, pull off the uh, hammer back on to seven, then you start the same pattern that we did on the A string. And then, 
Um, and then it does that same maneuver where it goes up to five and nine. After you've done it like, like four times here in the, in the uh, fret hand, you hammer on five, nine and continue the pattern. But it only does it a couple of times there at the five, nine. And then he just kind of pulls off to the, the ninth fret there on the D to, and, and holds that note. So we have this so far. Now we start the same thing that we did on the D string, um, on the G string though. So we start with the tap at the 12th fret and then pull off the three and hammer on the seven. And then you start the same pattern. So the, the key here, when he gets to the, the, uh, the G string, he starts kind of ramping it up. So he does that little pattern twice there on the, with three, seven in the fret hand, and then moves it up to five, nine in the fret hand. So, so it is. Then back down to three, seven. And then back up to five, five nine. So we have this. So, so far away this one. Kind of just, so you just hold that ninth fret there, just pulled off that ninth on the G. And then we start that descending tapping leg. So that right there, uh, once again, Eddie's actually using these fingers. When you see him play. So you might want to use these. Uh, I kind of, doesn't really matter. I kind of go back and forth. But uh, anyway, so the, the tapping pattern, there's a pattern, but once again, he has this little thing that he starts it with first. So he's gonna have, tap at the 12th fret on the high E string, pull off to, five and then hammer on to eight so that's the start a little three note lick to start it and now we have a continual pattern descending at least for uh, like four strings so after we have this right there we're kind of setting up and we're going to do this we're going to tap 12 on the high string pull off to eight seven five and then hammer on out of nowhere so they call them. over on the eighth fret there on the b string so like i said it could be a ring finger or whatever and that's the pattern and then you start that same thing now from the b string so that hammer on from nowhere happened on the g string now and then we're going to start the same thing on the G string. And then we're going to, we kind of start the same thing on the bottom, the, these last two strings. What we're going to do is tap and act like we're going to continue to lick like before. So you're tapping at 12, pull off to 8, 7, 5. But here, there's a little difference. We're going to go ahead, instead of hammering on the 8th fret there, out of nowhere on the A string, we're going to tap the 12 and then just pull straight off the 8, 7, 5, and the open A string. So we have this. All right, so that, there's a little pattern in there and that kind of helps you memorize it. That, real quickly, when you get to that pull off, Open A, you're gonna come down here, and uh, you're gonna grab this. It's the F sharp on the second fret on the low E string, along with the second fret on the D and the G. All right, so that kind of makes an F sharp minor seven chord. 
Um, and, you know, I, I, a lot of times I, I like using my, my thumb here on the low string, both grab it like that as well. All right, so now this rhythm down here when the full band kicks in, uh, we start with that chord, and then we start this kind of little shuffle fill on the low E string, and you're kind of going back and doing that whenever you have a little bit of, I mean, he holds some of the chord. Uh, he, sometimes he wants that chord to be heard, but then he goes down and he starts kind of doing a quick little shuffle on uh, the low E string. And that shuffle is always going to be here at the second fret. You'll see, sometimes when you'll see when he plays it, he'll go, he'll play like, uh, come around and, and just grab it with his uh, middle finger. So really you can kind of play this in, in many different ways. But uh, the shuffle is the important part. So it's a very fast shuffle, so it's kind of hard to pick up the shuffle even on the recording button. Uh, but so we actually hold that chord a little bit, go down, and you're playing that second fret there on the low E string and that little shuffle rhythm. And then you jump up here and grab these double stops. You're going to play the fifth fret on the D and the G, then back to the fourth fret on the D and the G. And then it comes back and does a couple quick little hits on the low E, so kind of keep that shuffle feel. And then we played the, those same double stops, but at the first fret on the D and the G. One, two, one, two, and then slide one and two again. So this, and then back to the F sharp there in the bass with, with the shuffle feel. After you've done that shuffle a little bit there on that F sharp, after that, kind of slides up the low E string. And he's doing that because he's jumping up here to these high, uh, higher double stops. So that's at the 10th fret there on the D and the G. 7, 4, and then back to those. And then um, back to the shuffle, then back to the fives and fours. So after you go back, it's kind of the same thing again. We go back to this E sus2 chord. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not E sus2, it's an E sus4. So that's just the open E string, second fret on the A, second fret on the D, second fret on the G. A power chord there. All right, so basically coming out of this tapping lick. Then we get to the uh, classroom breakdown section, so I'll get a performance of that real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it. All right, remember, all these performance sections are in that Play Guitar Hits app, which Play Guitar Hits, by the way, is from the makers of Guitar Pro. So we all love Guitar Pro software. So um, it's the real deal. It's it's really well done. And you'll see um, all these performance sections that you see in this video will be done with Synchronized Tab. So uh, go check it out. So now, we have this classroom breakdown section. Uh, so I'm going to kind of roll it back a little bit here. Eh. So that right there, 
you can see Eddie using, you know, in quite a few uh, live videos, you can see this uh, done in like little guitars as well too, the way he likes to kind of pick double stops, um, especially on like a clean guitar setting. And it's kind of clever how he does it. I mean, he, he, he had a very unique picking style in that he would sometimes pick with just um, his thumb and index, like a normal kind of traditional style. Sometimes with, uh, with just the thumb in the middle and sometimes with the thumb and middle and index. And he was always just, you know, throwing it around. For a lot of these sections, and I believe here, um, watching, really trying to get some footage of him playing this, um, Harper teacher uh, during this little kind of classroom breakdown section, it looks like he's actually picking it like so. He's holding the pick like a traditional, just between the thumb and the index, but he has he still uses the index finger to finger pick with it. So he has that that thumb of the that pick there, but he's still using his index and middle finger to kind of get that nice snappy sound. So he's still finger picking with his index finger, even though he's holding a pick with it as well. So he can still use his pick. Like when we get to the open, so this, up to this lick, those are started with a pick stroke, but then we're back to using our fingers. Um, now you'll see this, really you can see him use, do this technique a lot when he's doing like little guitars. Um, but anyway, so that's how I'm going to be playing it. Uh, I think it sounds more, you know, snappy like it does on the recording. So what's going on here? We're going to have this. So I'm playing a, a bar at the second part across the D and the G. So that's first of all. Now we're just on the D and the G strings here. We're going to now have the fifth fret there on the G while we still keep that second fret there uh, with the bar at the second fret. So I'm playing that, um, picking those notes with the index and the middle finger. Pick it a couple times. So you pick it and then pick it and pull that G string. The, the note on the G string, that fifth fret, down to the second fret there, which is being held by the bar. So we have this. After you do the pull off, then you pick the uh, just the that double stop there at the um, second fret there. Now the third time through, just do the pull off, and then we start that little lick. So what is going on there? First, we're going to pick the open A string, and then you're going to pick the fifth fret on the A, hammer on, six and seven, and then over to the uh, double stops again at the fifth fret there on the G and the B, so that's going to be finger picked, and then play the double stops at the eighth fret on the G and the D, and slide them down to seven. You can do this with a bar, like Eddie actually plays it with a little bar. I like to kind of separate notes like that and control them better. Like that. Now, when you're doing those notes on the A string, you're going to hear slightly palm muted. Which gives it kind of a little sound, even with those hammer ons. So, just on that, the notes that are on the A string, it's kind of a little, I know, it's kind of little, little details, but it does make a difference. that so kind of start each one of that, those notes of the second fret there and then after the fourth time you do a pull off instead of doing that lick it just hits the open d and g together now coming out of this uh classroom breakdown we kick the distortion back in and we have the verse section so here's a quick performance of that So now this thing is it's 
pretty close. It's, it's similar, a little bit simplified version of the uh, classroom breakdown. So we're back to just using all the a pick now. You don't have to do any finger picking. <laughs> So we start with just the A power chord, and then you pick the third fret there on the uh, A string, and then pick it again, and pull off to the open A. And I like to kind of just, after I do that, kind of uh, um, drop the hand and then hit the next hit with an upstroke, so it kind of still keeps that kind of shuffle feel going. When you get that up to speed, it makes it easier to keep the shuffle feel when you do that last one with an upstroke. And then we have this. So it's kind of the same thing here. Open A string, five, six, seven, hammer. Over to the fifth fret there on the G and uh, the D. And but now we're gonna pick these these double stops from the eight and the seven instead of going sliding them. Just pick them. Now this last time of playing that verse riff uh, takes us into the pre-chorus. Now the two pre-choruses in the song are slightly different. So um, you're going to hear a quick performance of pre-chorus number one right here, then I'll show you how to play it. All right, so this going into this pre-chorus, we have this. So that was kind of the starting the same lick, like there, that. But instead of going, we have this, which is uh, really kind of just doing full major chord across the eighth fret there, across the D, G, and the B. Then seven, five, and then back to seven. You can do the full, add the, the D note there in the bass here on that last one. And then there's a pick slide. Another one. And then back here. So it's kind of the same thing we did here, but just different frets. We have 13th fret, the, those, uh, that major triad across the D, G, and the B. Then 12, then 10, back to 12. And then we have this. So he, what he's doing there, he's playing the 10th fret there on the G and the B and just slightly bending it down. And then we go back to the 12 across all three strings, the D, G, and the B. So we have this. All right, and then we have the ending to the pre-chorus, so it looks like this. So, that starts up here, it's just kind of descending power chords. We're going to start here at the 13th fret on the A string and the 15th fret on the D and the G. So pick the A string first, and then the D and the G string. Now we move that down chromatically to start. All the way down to the 10th fret. One fret at a time. And then we just go to straight power chords without that little, that little bit. We just play the ninth fret power chord there. Eight, seven, six, back up to seven. And down to the open eight power chords. So we have this. Uh, 
Uh, and that is it for the, uh, the, the pre-chorus. And that takes us into the chorus riff, which is, um, you know, very similar to the verse. So let's check it out right here. All right, so that is the exact same riff that we did in the uh, in the verse. And then it's got the same ending that we had in the at the beginning of the song that with that E sus four chord. So just second fret on the A D and the G into an, the A power chord there. All right, and then we go um, back into the same class kind of classroom breakdown section with a clean guitar part. Uh, it's the same thing that he did before, so there's nothing new there. And we go into the same verse as well. Uh, then we get to pre-chorus number two. Uh, now there's just a slight difference in this. There's some harmonics added to this, uh, but it's, it's very similar. So let's check out the performance real quick. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, it's the same little thing that we do to get into the pre-chorus. Right here, instead of doing the, that pick scrape, we have some harmonics. Just like that. So it's uh, just the seventh fret harmonic on the G string twice. And then you're gonna pick uh, the harmonics, still staying on the seventh fret, on the D, G, B, and then back to the D and the G. So we have this. And then we're back, so that got basically replaced the uh, pick scrape from the first pre-chorus. And then everything else is the same. So it's the same same ending as the uh, the first pre-chorus there. All right, so now that takes us into uh, the chorus, the, the next chorus section, which is just like the first. There is that little tapping ending that is the intro to the solo, um, but you know uh, we're gonna be covering that in the solo. So uh, now, speaking of the solo, let's take a look at it. So here's a full performance video of Eddie's amazing guitar solo for Hoffer Teacher. <laughs> So we have got our work cut out for us here, obviously. So we're going to start here with that opening tapping lick, which is a little bit different than the tap. It kind of uses some of the same patterns, but a little bit different than the tapping lick that you saw at the very beginning of the song. Um, so we have, um, obviously, just coming out of here, we start with this tapping lick coming right out of the chorus, and we have this. <laughs> This start before when we did the first tapping lick, we did a, a tap on the 12th fret, right? To start it, pull off to five, and then hammer on eight, right? Remember, you can use any fingers you really want. Now, Eddie does the same pattern, except that eight is hammered on from nowhere onto the B string. So it looks like this. I don't know why, but that's what he chose for there. For there. Anyway. Then we get back up top and start the same pattern that we did before. So that's that tap on 12, pull off to 8, 7, 5, hammer on from nowhere on the 8th fret on the B string. And then we start that same pattern, so it's the same pattern right there. So the, verse, the very beginning, that note on the 8th B string instead of the um, high E is the, the little three notes that start the lick. That's the difference, and then we start the same pattern. All 
and then the same ending instead of going into the chord the chord though we have this it goes into this section all right so that's a bend at the fourth fret there on the g string release pull off to the second fret and then go back to the four and you're going to start the uh, you know, the patented Eddie Van Halen uh, tremolo picking. We have the fourth fret there on the G. Sorry. Then up to six, nine, eleven, then thirteen. And it ends with a hammer on from that thirteen to the fourteen after you done a little bit of tremolo picking on that thirteen. All right, now from there we have this for this next little phrase. Uh, it's gonna slow down, it looks like this. All right, so that's gonna be the uh, 14th fret there on the high E string. And do a 17th fret bend at the on the B string. Back to the 14th on the high E string. Then we're going to go over to the B string there. Um, we're going to play the 14th fret, hammer on 17, pull back off to 14, and then pick 14 a couple more times after you get that pull off. So we have this. Then we're going to pull off 17 to 14 again. Go. Then we're going to roll over to the 14th fret on the high E string. Then back to 14 on the B. Hammer on 17. Pull back off to 14. Then over to 16 on the G. So, uh, and then back to that 14 on the B. So let me just go through that much. And then we'll end it with this little lick. So it's going to be a bend at the 16th fret there on the G. Pulse that bend. Then play 16 without the bend. Hammer on 14 to 16 real quick. Over to 14 on the B string. And then you're going to roll back over to the 14 on the G. And then we'll holst that bend. So the whole um, phrase put together. All right, so this next phrase looks like this. So, you know, a lot of these licks, I mean, we're, we're kind of breaking them down note for note, but, you know, these things were just kind of ingrained into Eddie's hands. So he can just kind of, he's not really thinking about, he's just kind of kind of winging it. They're kind of off the cuff licks. Um, but he does, you know, he does a pretty good job of recreating it when he, whenever he played it live, just because those are just the patterns that are kind of locked into his hands. Um, so it is kind of valuable to detail it really note for note and stuff so let's um it's gonna be a lot easier to probably follow in the app too if you if you want to check out that app so we have um some bends here at the second fret um uh, so you start with just without bend and then like three notes bent at the second fret there on the g back to the fourth fret on the d then back to the second fret without a bend and then a so we have this. So it's kind of just kind of really kind of dig it in on that second fret of the G string. So it's 
So you basically you go back to that, do that band, go back to the D string on the, the fourth fret again, then back to the two and the G, and then you go into a bend. This really kind of starts the next section of this leg. Bend at the fourth fret there on the G. So we have this leading up to that. All right, now from there, we do get a lick coming up here in a second that's repeated. It looks like this. All right, so we start here with a bend at the fourth fret on the G. Then play the second fret there on the B. Roll over to the second fret on the high E string and then pull off five to two on the B string. Clear this. Uh, and then we start the pattern really that we're gonna, the picking pattern I'm gonna do, but the first one is just slightly different from where he's playing the notes. The pattern is the same, the rhythm. But we're gonna play the second fret on the high E string twice. And then we're gonna pull off, we're gonna pick five on the uh, B string, pull off two, pull off to the open B. Now I'm going to start that same rhythm again, but now those first two notes, instead of being at the uh, second fret on the high E string, they're going to be that same fifth fret there on the B string. So you basically pick them twice, or really three times, because you got to pick the note again to start the pull off with. So we have, instead of going, we have this. So this one right here, you do this just the first time. And then when you get to the one where you're picking it, uh, kind of repeated three notes, then the pull off here on the B string, you're gonna do that like five times. And obviously, you're gonna wanna palm mute it. And when he's playing it at warp speed, you can really, you need to kind of palm mute it just to make those notes pop out. So it is. Alright, then we, we're going to end the lick here with uh, a bend of the 5th fret again on the B string. Then we have this. So that bend of the 5th fret on the B. Then you're going to play the 2nd fret on the high E string. Roll over to the 2nd fret on the B string. Hammer 5. Pull back off to 2. So we have this. Over to five on the uh, G string. Then we go back to the high E string again. We're going to play the second fret, then the second fret on the B, and then the fifth fret on the G. Pull off to four, pull off to two. So we this. Then we play the fourth fret there on the G a couple times in the, uh, on at the second fret over to four on the um, D string and then back to the second fret there on the G with a bend just to kind of end that whole phrase. All right, and then we have this next uh, section of the solo. All right, so it's kind of really building the anticipation of my favorite parts there of the solo. So we're going to start. This is uh, starting on the G string here. Second fret there. Then four, five, six. And then play nine, eleven on the G. Nine, ten on the B. Then you can play 14 on the B, 12 on the high E string. And then that is going to go into a, a unison bend that kind of starts the next phrase here. So it looks like this. All 
I'll, I'll stop there because it gets kind of a, a lot of notes to remember. So we're going to start with this unison bend. So that's going to be the 14th fret there on the high E string, bending the 17th fret on the B. You can pick the note on the high E first and then do the unison bend. So you're just keep keeping that note on the 14th on the high E while bending up and playing the note on the um, on the, the B string with it. And then we have this. Pick 14 there on the high E string. Pull off 16 to 14. And you hear these little muted notes. A lot of time later on, uh, it kind of sounds good doing that each time, but he's not actually hitting that full note until the, the, the last couple. Uh, he's m more doing it. You kind of hear a muted note after it. Kind of like that. So we have uh, pulling off 16 to 14 on the high E. Then you hear that kind of muted hit, kind of on the muted B string or whatever. I'm kind of muting that with the tip of my index finger. And then you're going to pull off 17 to 14. And then you're going to pull off 19 to 14. And this time, you're going to play the 14 on the uh, B string after it. So I have this. And then, once again, back to the 17th fret, pull off from 17 to 14. And then hitting the 14th fret there on the, the, on, B, on the B string. And those are kind of like staccato notes. It's not like... You don't, you're not holding that note. So it's... And then we have this. So that goes... So after you've done this, the pull off from the 17, 14, the second time, we'll play that 14 on the B. Then we have this... So that goes 17, 16, back to 17. And then you're going to play uh, the 16th fret there, hammer 17, pull back off to 16, pull off to 14. So we have this. Over to 17 on the B, back to 14 on the high E, back to 17 on the B, and then... Um, you're going to start kind of really the next for eight, the section of this lick, uh, which looks like this. All right, so the, the, the phrasing right there and the timing of it, um, it's, it's really good to know the sound of the solo, obviously, before you, you do any of this stuff, any, learn any song, but especially right here because it's, it really kind of makes all the difference timing that it's kind of a lot of attitude right here in this little this little these couple of measures here so that's real important to get down so uh right here after this little you're gonna do a bend and release at the 17th fret on the b string pull off to 14 roll over to uh, 14 on the high e string then you can play 14 on the b hammer 17 pull back off to 14. Then you're going to bend up on the uh, 16th fret there on the G string. Then play 14 on the B, 14 on the high E, kind of roll over to it. Pull off 17, 14 again. So do this. So. Then you're going to go back down to the 16 on the B string. This time you're not going to bend it though. You're going to go just play that like that and then go back up to the 14th fret there on the B. So it is. And then we have a quick, uh, we're going to play the 14th fret basically right here on the B string with a 16th fret there on the G. And you're going to slightly bend up. So you're going to basically kind of a unison bend, but he doesn't quite get there to the unison. We're going to play the 14 on the B, 16 on the G. He's just playing it so fast. You do that quick bend right there. So you're just keeping that note stationary on the B string and bending up the 16th fret there on the G. And then you just play the 16, 14 again without the bends. 
And then we, we're going to do the, that same unison bend again. This time you can come all the way up and release that bend. So you bend and release, pull off to 14, and then play a 16, 14 again. All right, so, uh, so far we have this. And then end it. So that's going to uh, play 14, 16 on the G. And then a quick bend on that 14th fret. Kind of holds that bend. And then pull off 16, 14. It's really cool. So we have this. Alright, and then we're going to end the solo with this. Alright, so that starts with a bend at the 4th uh, fret on the G. Then you're going to play the 2nd fret on the B, roll over to the 2nd fret on the high E. Then a bend and release at the 4th fret. Off the two, sorry, this over to the uh, fourth fret there on the D string, then play that second fret on the B and second fret on the G. So, this then bend up the fourth fret on the G, and then we start doing some unison bends. Uh, that's going to be the 5th fret here on the B with the uh, bending up the 7th fret there on the G. So add that. And then uh, do the bend a couple times here at the 7th fret there. And then kind of the same ending we did before, the E sus 4. And then that takes us back to the uh, classroom breakdown section that we've already covered. And then we have this outro section. So you're going to see a little performance here. Um, they did a good job of creating this backing track for me um, because this is really a free time. There's a lot of like free time stuff going on in this section. So it's kind of hard to get like perfect with a, with a backing track, obviously. But uh, uh, anyway, so you're going to see that performance here. Then I'll show you how to play it. So now we start the outro section with the same chorus riff. So we've seen that before. But then we start getting into these little extra hits that come in like this. All right, so that's the same riff there. But after you pull off the open A, just hit the open A again, and then we start these, just kind of these uh, major triads moved up chromatically. So that's the 11th fret across the D, G, and the B. Then 12th fret, 13, and then 14. So the same chord each time. You gotta jump back pretty quick. And 
grab that third fret on the A string. Repeat. Now the third time through, you should repeat these trias. And then, That's up here all the way at the um, 19th fret on the A string. Kind of tremolo picket. All right, so now after that little tremolo note here at the uh, 19th fret on the A, that kind of dissolves down to a G power chord. And uh, kind of the ending of the song, the, kind of start, the first of it looks like this. All right, so that G power chord, it's like a G major chord, but you're just kind of muting the A string there, so there's no third in there, so it's just an open G power chord. Then we start with the uh, tremolo picking. Everything up on the, on the G string, so we have this open G, two, four, five, seven. And then we're gonna move it up to the 12, 14, 16, 17, 19, 21, and then bend it up. And then kind of quit the terminal pick and just kind of end that bend. And then there's just pretty much a bunch of chaos. Which I think he's kind of doing uh, how I did it at least. I just kind of just continue a slide with like up the G string. And then just kind of do it with the fret hand and picking it. It's fun to do, regardless if that's what he's doing or not. And then um, we go to the um, very end of the song. Looks like, the, looks like this. <laughs> So that's just an A major chord. Kind of trim little picked across strings. And then take it to this five, the, the, that same triad shape, and you still keep, keep that A string ring in if you want. Especially underneath the A chords, but we have the A chord, then up the fifth fret, and then seven. Five, seven, and then when you get up here, the octave of this A down here. And then dissolve it down to the the A power chord at the end of the song. So it is a beast. So uh, if you want a little bit of help, like practicing along with it, uh, check out that Play Guitar Hits app. Um, they did a really good job of synchronizing the tablature for it, uh, for all these performance sections, so you'll be able to kind of slow it down and work your way up to tempo. All right, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.